Here we go. This is Partners in Crime with Adam Croft and Robert Dawes. Twat. Hello. Oh, blimey, that was a good start, wasn't it? Hello. <laughs> welcome to Partners in Crime. I was about to say, welcome to the episode that almost didn't happen due to various technical hitches and um, and issues at this end. Yeah, I it's all didn't... Richard Branson's fault. Never mind. Yeah. I, I, I didn't expect that my, my voice giving out would be one of those. But, uh, no, yes. but, no, but uh, yeah, the, you're um, only human. You're only human. You must realise you, you, you're so harsh with yourself. I know. Forgive I know. yourself that frog in the throat. <laughs> it's there I'm, to I'm, slow you down. I'm hoping, talking about frogs in the throat, I'm hoping the gremlins in the uh, broadband connection don't give up, as they have been um, throughout this week. But uh, ap- apologies if it does happen. It's not my fault. Um, it's Virgin Media's. I'll uh, as opposed to last week when it was my fault entirely because I hadn't plugged my laptop in. <laughs> yeah. so, it's bizarre, isn't it? You, you were yeah. the other side of Europe a few weeks ago in Latvia. We managed yeah. to record without any technical difficulties whatsoever. Nope. And the second we get back to being a couple of hundred yards apart, we, we can't actually <laughs> manage Grim- to couple an episode together. <laughs> it's called the, the, the Mid-Bedfordshire Gremlins. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we've both had experience of that. For some reason, where we are in the country is is sort of uh, where whoever you go with for Wi-Fi. This must be fascinating for people listening. But I'm going to continue. Yeah, yeah. I've started, so I'll finish. For some reason, because we're in the country. I mean, there's no we're sort of no immediate big city or anything like that, other than uh, London, perhaps. Uh, we're sort of written off a little bit, and uh, they they say they can supply all these high speed for frequencies and goodness knows what. Sign up for them, and it's exactly the same as it's always been, you know. So <laughs> I don't know. You, 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 you pay your money, and you get a fairly lousy response, I think. On well, and I've tried most of them now, and uh, they're all as they're all as bad as each other. So well, it's a miracle well, that we're talking, and it's even more of a miracle that people might be listening to this. Um, well, there's a good chance we might be able to actually record in person next week because um, <clears throat> the uh, lockdown restrictions are going to be reviewed. Um, in the next few days, I think it's from next Wednesday, isn't it? They they may be changing, but we don't know because we don't know different areas will be changing at different times, and it depends on whether uh, cases are low enough, high enough, or or whatever. But we'll see. There's a there's a possibility. Oh, well, week. we might be together. Keep but, your fingers um, crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. I mean, if we go I down am. to we go down to tier one and London goes up to tier three, that's. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, a strange old, a strange old thing. Anyway, I think lots of people are confused. I'm a bit confused. I have to say. I mean, you can go out. Uh, someone's invited me to go out for for a meal, but it's got to be a business meal. So, and it is going to be a business meal, as it happens, because we're talking mm. we're talking business. But there's you know there's an element to that business meal which is supposed to be enjoyable. So mm. you know you've got this idea. This idea. Someone will do a sketch about it. It's sort of the, the the part of the meal which is serious business. You know, mm. talking ab- about sort of costs. And uh, and logistics, and the other bit, which is just saying, this is a delicious red. Thanks very much. How's your steak? So um, <laughs> yeah, you have to go know. outside for that bit, though. You have to, yeah. <laughs> what with the smokers? That's another <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, I've yeah. noticed whatever the smokers are outside. If you go out for a breath of fresh air, you'll probably get lung cancer these days mm. because I mean, <laughs> it's 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 terrible. Everyone hovers hovers outside the entrances or in the garden or whatever the smokers that is, and uh, that's their choice. And God bless them and, and what have you. But uh, don't dally in a doorway. My grandma used to say to me for no good reason. And there's um, the episode title sorted already. Four yeah. minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> ne- next week, I think, is probably going to end up being. Um, I mean, this episode is going out slightly late um, due to various things, and next week's will probably be the same. Um, and it is likely to be our Christmas special as well, looking at the way the calendar is falling. And also quite possible the last show of the year because of the way that everything else is falling and where Christmas is and where bank holidays and things and everything else that's going on but um, we might get another ad hoc one in before the end of the year but yeah hopefully we can be together for our Christmas show that'd be a nice well that would be very very good I mean it does mean I've got to buy you a ruddy present so uh, but uh, so uh, you know I don't (laughs) mind doing that well Um, your ruddy present is still there on my my (laughs) shelf behind me so um, right um, as we were, we're a few minutes and we've got so much to get through today, so many yes. news stories and things. Um, one thing I've spotted, um, quite interesting, we've both got um, some links to Scarborough. and I Scarborough noticed, Fair? 
Yes, I noticed. There's um, uh, a news article this week that a German-based TV and film production company has been shooting scenes in Scarborough recently for a new detective series for German TV network ARD. Um, UFA fiction, say The Search, is based on a novel by best-selling German author Charlotte Link, and it's being turned into a two-part TV drama. The film companies uh, and crew have been working in a COVID bubble for a number of weeks and are being tested twice weekly. The production will star Henry Reitz as London Scotland Yard officer Kate Linville. Uh, sorry, it should be Henny Reitz. Um, and filming on the project is due to be completed this month. Was that Henny yeah. Rince or Henna Rince? Um, H- Henny uh, Rince. Uh, oh, Henny. Oh, that's it. Okay, fair enough. Okay, that's well. That's that's great. I mean, uh, and Scarborough is a wonderful location. Mm. I happen to know because I spent um, eight, eight years plus uh, locating there. Um, it's it's beautiful. The jewel on that coast. Uh, well, Whitby as well. The whole of that coast is beautiful up there. So I'm I'm not at all surprised that uh, the German uh, filmmakers have decided to choose it as. A, uh, a, as a location. So, well, that's very interesting. So uh, I've been actually doing some research because I suddenly realised the last two months I've been uh, slightly winging it. Isn't it funny? No one ever mentioned it, not even 20 times. <laughs> um, so I, I found this little piece in there by the, the ever terrific Laura Wilson in, in The Guardian uh, going through her favourite books of, of, of recent times. And there's this little bit that I think uh, I'm going to read out to you. In fact, I don't think. I know I'm going to do it because it covers uh, some books that uh, two I uh, I know and one I'm going to read and carrying on this theme last week that taking a a book that we recommended through the year and recommending it as a Christmas present uh, are some of our favourites. One of them is in this little piece. So uh, Laura writes, the second novel from Stuart Turton, marvellous and very pleasant uh, to say the least, Stuart Turton, author of Costa Award winner The Seventh Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, one of our uh, favourite books of last year, as I recall, is also set in the 17th century, The Devil and the Dark Water. We've mentioned this on Partners uh, previously. It's a fiendish maritime mystery. It involves a lot of secrets and a great deal of swash and buckle. Uh, The next book, Moving Between Italy... Oh, no, this is it. Moving Between Italy in 1943 and London two decades later is this new book called Bent by Joe Thomas, published by Arcadia. It's based on the life of the real policeman, Harold Chaloner, war hero and dodgy copper, an evocative fictionalisation of one man's eccentric style and mental deterioration. I've heard good things about this book. Uh, it's Bent by Joe Thomas. And here we have a book that which we mentioned earlier in the year, very favourably uh, by one of our favourite writers, Mark Billingham. Uh, hello, Mark. Hope you're listening. Um <laughs> It's Cry uh, Baby. Uh, It's the prequel to his Tom Thorne series uh, and is far enough in the past to be another country. John Major is in Downing Street. Mobile phones are the size of bricks, only for twats and the seriously minted. And neither Brexit nor Covid are anywhere on the horizon. Can you imagine living in a world like that? I can't. Uh, Billingham Billingham expertly ratchets up the tension in this tale of Missing Child and the original story is guaranteed to please aficionados. Uh, That's a a great book, Cry Baby. Uh, Certainly if you're a a, a Tom Thorne uh, follower like uh, we are. But uh, if you're not and you're thinking of starting, well, start there because it's uh, it's, uh, probably... uh, a prequel, um, a sequel, I mean, but uh, it's a prequel. What am I talking about? It is a prequel, and so you could start there and then start uh, reading the whole series from the beginning, and you'd probably find that book available to you um, at a place called um, mm. Ob Cob, uh, Cob Lob. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, Kobo.com. Ah! Head over there. They, it, they, uh, they very wonderfully sponsor our podcast and very grateful we are too. So head over to Kobo.com, K-O-B-O. And if you enter the promo code CRIME at the checkout, you'll get 90% off of your first ebook purchase from them. And if you follow the link in the show notes, then a very large selection of crime books is yours with 40% off of them for life. That's for life. So almost half price reading just for listening to Partners in Crime. How about that? You that will be taken to the place of discount where you'll be sentenced to 40% off for life. Take the prisoner <laughs> away. 
If you're a Partners yeah. in Crime patron, you get all sorts more as well. So check out the link in the show notes. For that. that sounds great. See, I always I go into a, a slight fever when I uh, uh, am instructed to follow the link anywhere. Uh, that sounded a bit boring, didn't it? Following the link up the stumps, sunny. <laughs> Low lights, highlights, whatever it goes on about. Anyway, uh, yeah, I always get worried because I never know. I've followed so many links in my time and they've always ended in tears. So, uh, but again, uh, most people listening to this programme will be far more advanced and uh, sophisticated in their uh, knowledge of uh, of such things. So um, carry on. Well, <clears throat> you were reading those um, those books there. I think I know where you got those uh, little bits from because they pop up in, in uh, something I was going to read out a little bit later. So you can see how well we've prepared <laughs> this episode. Um, while, while we're talking about filming on location, uh, the new ITV drama Grace is being filmed in uh, Brighton. Yes. That has now wrapped, um, based on Peter James's Roy Grace novels. That's going to be on ITV soon, uh, starring John Sim, who mm-hmm. is known for Life on Mars and also in Doctor Who. He'll be playing Roy Grace. And also Richie Campbell uh, will be playing DS Glenn Branson, Raki Iola as uh, Alison Vosper and Craig Parkinson from uh, Line of Duty and, and whatnot. Else. Oh, also it's smashing it. Craig. It plays a, it yeah. plays a brilliant baddie, doesn't it, Craig? He does. Uh, he does. Uh, but, I mean, that's going to be fascinating for people watching that series because anyone who knows and loves Peter's books... Uh, well, have got their own ideas. We've mentioned this so many times uh, uh, of exactly what those characters look like. You mentioned the characters' names... And you mentioned the actors' names. I know all the actors, uh, but I also know the characters very definitely is, uh, in my mind as someone completely different. So it's going to be fascinating. It's going to be brilliantly done. Uh, mm-hmm. Anything with John Sim in it is going to be marvellous. And, uh, um, and of course, it's, it's, it's uh, adapted from Peter's terrific books. But, again, it's that strange thing. Do you just go go with the flow, which, of course, you must, uh, if, if you love mm-hmm. the series, and put your... Uh, idea of what those characters look and sound like, which is quite, you know, very, very well rooted if you've uh, read the entire series. Uh, and, uh, oh, if you're starting, it's, it's a great place to start because, of course, you know, uh, John Sim will become your Roy Grace. And uh, and then you start reading the books and and every time, uh, and, and imagine John all the way through it, um, like you do with Thor. Uh, John Thor with uh, and uh, Frost in May and and uh, countless other but Father Brown now, of course. So <laughs> there we are, rambling on. But uh, it, I, it's, it's always a, it's always a, it's always an interesting point, and people have very strong views about it. People say I'm not watching the television series because you know it will spoil my appreciation of the books, and uh, I wonder whether the two can coexist happily. I'm sure they possibly can, and I'm sure hundreds and thousands, nay millions of of people uh, managed to achieve it quite successfully. Uh, anyway, have, have you switched <clears throat> coffee brands recently, Bob? I'm as high as a kite. No, I'm not. I'm not I'm, I've got my Hobet <laughs> Hobet mug, which has got who done it on the other side. Uh-huh. Don't forget, I've been in, I've been quiet and shy and mysterious in Latvia for two months. So I mean, I, I, this is <laughs> I've come home and uh, all hell's let loose. You're catching up now. Well, um, Peter James is an executive producer on um, the ITV crime drama Grace. It's been scripted by Russell Lewis, based on Peter James's first two books, Dead Simple and Looking Good Dead. It's been filmed entirely at locations in Sussex. And in fact, yeah. it says here, shopkeepers have said they were asked to temporarily remove signs about face masks and social distancing because the drama's not set in a COVID-19 era. Um, it uh, will air in two parts. Both episodes will last for 120 minutes and it will hit the small screen early next year with no specific dates yet confirmed. That's going to be fascinating because, let's face it, the books themselves are thick um, uh, and uh, and uh, you know, so much detail. One of uh, Peter's great, great, well, many strengths is that, that his research is always superb and um, he relishes uh, all of that. And his books are, are, are great for showing that, not telling it. You know, we all know about, you know, show, don't tell. Um, and uh, he do, he does that wonderfully. So to to condense one of his novels into uh, 120 minutes is an incredible feat in itself. But it will be different. It will be exciting, and uh, um, and I look forward to it. Yeah. Well, um, lots to sort of rattle through. So I'm going to go straight on. I can't um, think up a segue in that amount of time, I'm afraid. But speaking of time, the times. There's one for you. Oh, yes. Have um, yeah, compiled. That's, that's, that's their, good enough for me. <laughs> their best selling novels of 2020 so far. Uh, quite a few of them are crime, actually. The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman is number one. You don't um, say. I know. <laughs> of course it is. 
Number three, uh, Robert Goldbraith, otherwise known as J.K. Rowling, Troubled Blood. You the don't fifth, say. <laughs> the fifth Cormorant Strike novel. Do you want to guess what was number two between those two, then? It's not crime. It's not crime? No. Uh, the second best-selling book of the year. Oh, oh. Uh, it's not Matt. It's not a Matt Haig book. Uh, he's I on the list. Was. He's on the list, but he's number 11. He's number 11. Uh, give us a clue, and let's see if we can get that. Give us um, a clue. Didn't make the book a short list, widely expected to have done so. Ah, that's a great clue for someone who knows the answer. Um, well, the, the, so, previous, the previous two in this um, trilogy won it, if that helps. Oh, no, no, no. I believe. No, I wish uh, it did. The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel, number two. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, Peter May's Lockdown was number four, a book that nearly didn't get released. Uh, Lee Child with Andrew Child, The Sentinel, uh, was in at number five. Ian Rankin's A Song for Dark Times. Uh, Rebus, complete with creaking lungs and knees, is back for more skullduggery, it says. Yes, that's splendid, um, yeah. <laughs> Matt Haig, you mentioned, not, not um, crime fiction, but in at number 11 on the Midnight Library. 50-50 by Steve Kavanagh was just below that at 12. And uh, number 16 was The Catch by T.M. Logan, which is one of my books of the year. I have it right here. It's very, oh, yes. Um, Bath red, as you can see, with the yes. curly yellow pages. But it's, um, a, a cracking that book cycle suffered cycle. much more than it deserves. They, they you tend were, to. You, you in the bath with them. Well, Matt Haig, interestingly enough, this week, so people listening to this next week will be able to catch up on the BBC iPlayer. Um, the Midnight Library has been read uh, as a uh, book at bedtime this week. Uh, mm. and it's, uh, it's, it's superb. And... Um, is it being read by you? Is that why you mentioned it? No, 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 no. But <laughs> some are far more talented. Um, so, yeah, OK, uh, I'm going to do well, one now. Oh, no, no carry you're not. on. No, you're no. not, because <laughs> I was going to go oh. on. When I was talking about the book recommendation of T.M. Logan and how yes. um, that, that it seemed to curl in the bath, as many of my books do. I did a bit of an experiment, actually, in the last You're talking about weeks. the book, I take it? Yes. Yes, it, good, it, carry on. It shrivels up in the bath and... Um, <laughs> The um, the paperbacks, it seems, are the ones that um, act the worst in the bath because I did a bit of an experiment. I read a hardback in the bath. Oh, yeah. I, I, I had a hard one in the bath in the last <laughs> week or two and it was this one, which is not strictly a crime novel, but it is yeah. absolutely full of crime, corruption, scandal and all sorts. It's a book called The Dark History of Hollywood. Oh, um, no, I love things like It's been out a few like years. That. It's by yes. Kieran Connolly. Um, and for someone who is intrigued by the kind of the scandals and all of this side of Hollywood, but is not really a big film buff and doesn't know a whole lot, you know, about one actor from another. Um it's actually <laughs> really, really interesting and it had me gripped throughout having, you know, very little interest in the subject, but having had it recommended, I thought, oh you know what, I'll I'll give it a go. And I read it in in two sittings the whole way through. It's a fantastic well, two book. baths you mean? You you No, you not read... two baths. All no, right, okay. What <laughs> one, one one bath and one chair. Okay. Um but it's yeah, so it's it's non-fiction and it is in um, chronological order from how Hollywood started and how it was kind of corrupt right from the beginning, right up to the modern day, but kind of um, set in themes as well as you go through. And it's it's a brilliant read. It's full of wonderful old pictures, um, which if you are a patron, you might be able to see here that the, the Douglas boys here, for example. Oh yes, um, Kirk. and various um, stuff going on. So here you've got some old. Pictures of Larry Parks and you know some old French films there. Larry um, Parks wasn't he the original uh, Al Jolson? The, the, maybe the Jolson. Maybe. The Jolson. Yes, yeah, I think he played uh, Al Jolson in the Jolson story. But yeah, got some some cracking. Bum, ones, yeah. ba, ba, ba. Buster, Buster Keaton from back in the day there. Oh, there's no one beats Buster uh, Keaton. A genius. Yeah. Yeah, there's some, some wonderful, interesting stuff. If you're at all interested in Hollywood or films, which I'm not, <laughs> I still absolutely love this book. It's still one of the most interesting non-fiction books I've ever read, so I'd highly recommend Dark History of Hollywood by... D Kevin the Dark Connelly. History of Hollywood, yes. Yeah. Well, that Buster Keaton, remember the famous that wonderful stunt he did where he was standing, stopped running, stopped, and the house front collapsed uh, on him and it just goes through the window. It's um, um, unforgettable. I tried it once, and uh, sadly, I was standing in the wrong place. Do you know? But, apparently, uh, I mean, this isn't in the book, but I have heard. I think he broke or dislocated his shoulder with that. I think it caught him as it came down. And, yes, it's um, a, it's and a badly sign. damaged his shoulder. I think. Well, they were, they used to do this. I mean, look at Howard Lloyd, sort of hanging off clocks in, on, on Broadway. Or, or, or mm. I mean, they they were quite fearless. You know, you see the stunts that they used to do. Uh, but anyway, that's a fantastic book. I mean, it sounds yeah, um, it sounds uh, terrific. It's uh, so uh, I hope that's my Christmas present, but it probably it is, isn't. It is not. No. Right. Well, uh, permission permission to speak, sir. Now, now you may speak. 
Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, now, the killing times, which I uh, refer to because I think it's a, a fantastic thing. Paul Heron's uh, take on all things criminal, whatever, um, has mentioned that, of course, in January, up and coming is the eighth series of Spiral no. on Grenage. I'm sorry, I, it's, it's coming up to Christmas. And uh, so he, he says, we've already teased that 2021 could be a monster year for crime drama. Just think of all the shows who had to postpone production because of COVID this year. It's a very good point. One of the most anticipated is the eighth and final series of French crime drama, Spiral. The series started in its native France earlier this year. And uh, we're expecting it to start in the UK in the early months of 2021. Thanks to one of our eagle-eyed readers, it's been brought to our attention, says Paul, that all seven previous series of Spiral are now available to view on the BBC's iPlayer in the UK. And this is great for me because would you believe I'm two series behind already? So I've got <laughs> six and seven to do. So we're, we're starting, uh, Amy and I are starting in on those uh, this evening. Uh, well, whenever the entire back catalogue, uh, Paul carries on to say, uh, catalogues of series are placed on uh, VOD, it means only one thing, that the new series is fairly imminent. Well, it obviously is. Uh, Will, who says, we'll bring you news of any transmission dates when they are um, confirmed. And someone said to me, you're always banging on about Spire. Well, I bang on a lot of, about crime dramas and documentaries anyway, but it's a particular favourite of mine. And they said, Let's try and sum up why. Uh, and I said, well, apart from it's brilliantly written, brilliantly acted, brilliantly directed and produced, uh, uh, Adam Sweeting, uh, uh, I think, describes it best. Spiral is a brilliant but dispiriting reminder that justice, justice, isn't a product of unamb unambiguous facts inscribed in black and white, but more like a teeming swamp of bribes, prejudices, lies, ambition and political expediency, a treacherous spiral in Indeed. So I'm really looking forward to getting back into the world of law, Gillo, uh, Judge Robin, Josephine Carlson, uh, Commissioner Herville, and um, whatever. And that brings me to a point. I met a star of uh, Spiral recently uh, in, oh. in Latvia. Um, uh, the wonderful actor Arben Bajrak Taraj, who was... Uh, Sorry, can, what, can you say that again? It's, um, it just cut out then as you were saying it. Arben Bajrak Taraj. That's it, lovely. It's probably anyway. He's a Kosovan born and a wonderful <laughs> actor. People know him from uh, uh, I mentioned it. I think last week mentioned him from Harry Potter and whatever. But he played one of the lead baddies in series two of Spiral. So uh, he turned up to start filming, and I thought I wasn't going to see him because of COVID and various other things. But we absolutely had dinner uh, one night, and what a fascinating, <laughs> fascinating chap he is. Plays bad is wonderful. He was one of the lead baddies in Taken, the first Liam uh, Neeson uh, film of that franchise. Would, uh, would you like me to show the picture to our um oh, our, yes. our, our patrons? Yes, go, yes. Uh, oh, there we are. Oh, there he is, and there am I. Yes, it, we'd only just met then, and uh, I was obviously a little bit nervous of him. But within <laughs> seconds, I realised what a splendid and lovely chap he is. He'd flown straight to Latvia uh, from uh, Albania, where he's filming a big. Netflix uh, television series, so he came over there to film uh, his bit on uh, on the Piper. So uh, a splendid chap, and uh, mm -hmm. it, it actually, in fact, probably uh, playing one of the leading roles in in my favourite, uh, if you can have favourites uh, in such things, uh, series of, of Spiral. So there we are. That's uh, uh -huh. our Ben. Lovely. Carry um, on. Well, no, I just uh, I wrote down the words "teeming swamp" that you um, said there earlier on. I can't remember in reference to what, but um, I think that's I think a we've teeming been, swamp. This, this podcast has been called similar in the past. I think a teeming swamp. Well, that's only when you're swamp. that's only when you're reading in the bath, Adam. Let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, and and uh, quickly on, uh, moving swiftly on, the, the Guardian have um, come up with their list of the best crime and thrillers of 2020. Of course, they have. It's December. Who isn't? And um, they've uh, come out with a, a big list, actually, of impressive debut um, crime thrillers, which they've listed here. The Man on the Street by Trevor Wood, in which a homeless Falklands veteran turns investigator. Uh, Kate Reed Petty's True Story, a powerful tale of the aftermath of sexual assault. Uh, Gin Patrol on the Purple Line by Deepa Anapara, the story of a child living in an Indian slum who, dis who investigates the disappearance of a school friend. Um, Black Rain Falling by Jacob Ross, um, set on a fictional Caribbean island. 
uh, three fifths. Be careful how I say that. John Virtues, three fifths. Try and wrap my tongue around that. Um, well done. Um, and of course, the Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, uh, which uh, needs no more introduction or description. They've also got a list of fantastic books in which racial tension and cultural burdens are explored to great effect. Uh, Your House Will Pay by Stephen Char, his novel of violence, revenge and redemption. When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Um, Leave the World Behind by Raman Alam. Uh, in Black Top Wasteland by S.A. Cosby, which we spoke about uh, yeah. earlier this year. That's, that's popped up quite a few times. Remain Silent uh, by Susie Steiner, the third novel in her Cambridgeshire Constabulary series with D.I. Man and Bradshaw. Uh, Don Winslow's Broken, a, 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 a collection of six novellas. Oh. And also they've got the themes of psychological thrillers with dysfunctional families. Uh, Lucy Atkins, Magpie Lane, Our Fathers by Rebecca Waite, Marion Brunet's Summer of Reckoning. Um, they've also got uh, We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker, Tana French's The Searcher, and on historical crime fiction, they've gone for Andrew Taylor's Last Protector and the second novel from Stuart Turton, which he spoke about uh, earlier, The Devil yes. in the Dark Water. Yes. And it says here, a fiendish maritime mystery involves a lot of secrets and a great deal of swash and buckle. Um, so I think we possibly got our quotes from the same place there. We, that's exactly. <laughs> we, we, we like a little bit of swash and yes. a little bit of buckle, do we not? Yes. Uh, so and, that's and interesting. Nope, I haven't finished yet. Oh, you haven't finished yet? Okay. <laughs> Listen, I've got my chaise long here. I just have... Give, okay. Give, give us a shout when you've finished. You have a little nap, dear. We'll be yeah. back soon. Yeah. Don't forget, give us a shout. <laughs> um, moving between Italy and London, Bent by Joe Thomas, which he mentioned as well. Uh, Cry Baby by Mark Billingham, which is the prequel to his Tom Thorne series. And it says here, I think, again, the words seem familiar. It's far enough in the past to be another country. John Major is in Downing Street. Mobile phones I've are the size of... I've said this earlier. That's exactly what I, I was know, doing. I know, exactly. Yeah, mobile phones are the size of bricks. Only Don't disturb for twats. me again. I'm trying to sleep. Only for twats and the seriously minted and neither Brexit nor COVID are anywhere on the horizon. And on no other episode of Partners in Crime will you ever hear the word twats three times, four times now. Speaking of which, Bob, you can come back now. Thank you very much. Uh, right, well, well done. That was absolutely splendid. And um, it's, it's a touch of uh, deja vu there. Uh, right, uh, what can I talk about? You've spoken about lots of books. I'm going to talk about myself. Um, I just want to mention two things. Uh, I have a special edition hardback yes. of, of Killing Rock uh, out this week, which I'm signing. And uh, with the signing and dedication, I'm going to be uh, off writing the very first line of the sequel to that book, which is uh, a Rock to Death. Um, and so that can be got through Hobeck. The wonderful Hobeck, for those who are watching this, you probably know them, Hobeck Publishers. Uh, just uh, get in touch with those and they will send me your address and they'll tell you all uh, about it. Um, it's uh, it's great fun. And what else are we doing? Uh, oh, yes, and I'm also uh, going to have a draw on people who actually get that copy and the winner is going to have their name in uh, the next novel. So that's my Christmas giveaway via Hobeck. And also, Hobeck News, Lewis Hastings, Seventh Wave, Trilogy is published by Hobe uh, this week. He's an incredibly exciting writer uh, living in New Zealand, a man of mystery himself. I've never seen a picture of him. He works undercover in all sorts of particular areas, so he has to be very, very careful. For all I know, it could, because he lives in New Zealand, he could be a milkman, uh, an undercover milkman. Uh, but I'm sure he's not. In fact, I have it on good authority uh, that he's not. But he's a, a, a fine fellow and very amusing. And he's written some cracking books. And the first of which I'm going to be talking about next week. That is also available uh, on uh, Hobeck. So those are those two. And coming up now is, uh, after mentioning Stuart Turton uh, and Mark Billingham's book, Twice! Uh, both of those. We're going to mention uh, another favourite book of this year um, and uh, by Ellie Griffiths, the wonderful Ellie Griffiths, and she has uh, won an award. She tweeted just the other day, uh, I was so honoured to win the 2020 Edgar's 
Award for Best Novel for The Stranger Diaries. And that's a great Christmas present if you're thinking of buying someone a book. Uh, Edgar himself faced some trials and tribulations on his journeys to the UK, uh, but thanks to Marjorie Flax and the MWA, he has arrived just in time for Christmas too. She was going to go over to the award ceremony, I believe, in New York, but because of COVID, uh, couldn't make it. Uh, but a lovely little bust of the mustachioed uh, Edgar himself uh, has been sent and arrived safely without any breakage and will no doubt be on a mantelpiece uh, in uh, the Griffith household. So congratulations to uh, Ellie for that. Very well deserved. And again, a book that we uh, mentioned earlier in the year that we are re-mentioning now uh, as a special favourite. And Stuart Turton also is an award winner this year. He uh, won uh, the Books Are My Bag Awards. He won there. Stuart Turton took home the Fiction Award with The Devil and The Dark Water. That is the third time we've mentioned that book, so <laughs> it's got to be good. Described be by, good. described by the, the the great Val McDermott as a glorious mashup of William Golding and Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, but with mm. a Scottish accent, of course. Of course. Well, um, two more very quick things to get through because I've already got a pile here for um, Partners in Crime, Arsenic and Old Lace, our yeah. after-show show, which we always record straight after this, which is available exclusive to our patrons. Um, the first thing to squeeze in here is that Granite Noir is going completely online in 2021 um, because it's on in February. So it's on February 19th to the 21st. Are you handing a tape measure over? Yeah, yeah, that was Amy at the door saying, "Have you got the tape measure?" Which looks suspiciously like the <laughs> the uh, the yellow and black uh, "Do not cross this crime scene" line on the bottom of the picture here. But there I, we go. I wasn't I wasn't going to mention that. But I thought oh, well, I like to colour coordinate but... when I possibly yeah. can. <laughs> so February 29th to the twenty first is Granite Noir. Um, it's already decided it's going to be completely online, and all events will be free to view, and the full program will be announced in the new year. So keep an eye out for that. I'm sure we'll mention that um, early next year as well. As as long as um, our our very kind sponsors agree to keep us on air next year, uh, more on that soon. Um, and in the Herald in Scotland, it was announced that Ian Rankin is to complete William McIlvenny's final novel, The Dark Remains. Ah, oh, um, oh. he published three books and had one handwritten manuscript, which remained tantalisingly unfinished when William McIlvenny died in December 2015. Uh, the final work will be published next year after being completed by Ian Rankin, the partner, uh, sorry, the author that McIlvenny's partner said he would have chosen himself to write his final words. The Dark Remain, the story of uh, Laidlaw, D.I. Laidlaw's first case, will be published on uh, September the 2nd next year. So there we are. Well, got that to look forward to as well. Well, smashing. Well, we've got to Arsenic and Old Lace coming up for yep. uh, uh, whatever. I'm going to be talking about Arenda Books, uh, great Arenda Books, and the uh, book, one of our favourites of the year, uh, Leela. And you're very good at, I always get this wrong, Leela Sigurdardotia. How's that? Pretty good. Uh, with mm. her latest book. Um, translated by a friend of uh, this podcast, uh, Quentin Bates. So I'll be mentioning that in Arsenic and Old Lace, and I'm sure you've got lots of old Arsenic and Old Lace to be mentioning as well. I've got a, yeah, a pile of um, stories here to, to go through and things to talk about. So yes, Have you noticed, after with. two months of us saying, well, we haven't done much preparation, uh, uh, and we haven't really got to be mentioning much crime fiction, we're both shuffling wads of papers mm. on our desks now, and, uh, and we're very hard to shut up. Yes, well, they're like buses, aren't they? Crime fiction stories. Sometimes you don't get anything for a long time, and then they all come along at once. And things we, we there's a possibility we might only have one more episode this year. We figure we should probably try and squeeze in as much as possible. Correcting the balance, the number yeah. twenty-seven to Tuftle Park. Yes. Right. Um, we done. Yeah. Well, I think so. I fancy a little bit of arsenic. How about some old lace? Let's have a go. <laughs> Partners in Crime was presented by Adam Croft and Robert Dawes and produced by Adam Croft. The theme tune was by the Caesareans. The Partners in Crime logo and imagery were designed by Stuart Bache. Partners in Crime is sponsored by Kobo, your favourite local bookshop, perfected. Bum, ba, bum.